I remember that uh, Elwick, Tommy Norris, and I were there uh, breaking this young man out with his class and uh, telling him it's only going to get harder in life. And by God, it has. And so, very, very proud of you. And you've, you've never disappointed any of us. And all you do is keep amazing the hell out of me. That's all I can honestly say. But uh, my wife appreciates it. She, she was. Glad to have somebody else help keep me straight. Uh, but uh, God bless you. I tell you, uh, as we say here, uh, the honor flight, thank you so very much for having us to come. Uh, there, there's friendships, comrades in arms. People have been wounded together. You know, we got one of my favorite bosses of all time sitting over there. Tom Boyhan, hell of a damn. Everybody just seemed to like me. There were lousy pilots, thank God, because I tell you, between Tom Boyhan and, and uh, Tommy Norris and a few other Gary Gray, thank God they couldn't fly because they were one hell of SEAL officers. So, so thank you. My good friends, Mike LaCaz, Hal Kirkendall, Wayne Hampton, Danny Harrell, Chuck, all you guys, we went to the training. Gary, we all went through the training at the same time. We're called Underwater Dental Enlisted Recruit Training. All my veterans, comrades in arms, it's you guys that were mentors to me too. I look around this room, John Feach, what a hell of a guy he was. Terry Moy, what a proctor, with his foot up my ass half the time. <laughs> Tell you, Dick Allen, what a monster. Vince Oliveira, unbelievable. And always, every time I think about Hell Week in our class, I think of Danny Herrero trying to carry paddles and we weren't tall enough to do anything else. <laughs> and still not tall enough to do anything else. <laughs> but I look out here and all you guys that were mentors to me as he was saying his uncle, my mentor, my greatest mentor of all time was my father. Sixth grade education, worked hard all his life. My mother gave me, in the mountains of South Carolina, gave me love, gave me religion. And my father was nothing but a perfect example of what a man should be like. You know, when we go through training in our class, class 49, the camaraderies, the friendships, they last forever. If the good Lord's willing, I hope to go to that great circle up in the sky and sit there and tell my lies to them as they tell their lies to me. Because I tell you one damn thing, as Wayne Hampton, I know, how Kirk told to tell more bullshit than anybody else I know. <laughs> but not, but Mike Lacoste tells really good ones too, but he uh, is a little bit more truthful than Hal sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I look at CEOs over here, Dan. I think of Uncle Dave, Andy Anderson, guys that were unbelievable commanding officers. I take Dick Flanagan, Tommy, and other people. Bruce Dyer was a big help for me, you know, in our, in our periods of time. But all were great officers, and I really enjoy every year that Paul Plum puts that thing on at the Brigantine, just to sit there and see everybody and listen to good old stories and talk about everything. I want to thank my good friend Woody Woodruff for picking me up off the Ben Ha River in North Vietnam. I'm glad he was fishing that day because if he hadn't, I'd been, I'd been the crab meat. So, uh, but he asked me if I wanted a ride and I said, sure do, buddy. So, uh, Woody, thanks for being here after 40 years. And thank you for what you did for saving my life and my men too. Cause I'd still be str uh, stroking and uh, but Tommy would have been in bad shape, that's for sure. Um, I look out in this audience, 
And I believe in each and every one of you guys that fought with me as comrade in arms. And I know you know how we feel about what happened when we came back. But I've always said, be very, very proud of what we've done. Be proud of what we did. Be proud that we served our great nation when they asked us to go. And did anybody say no? Nobody said no. Did anybody in this room run across the damn border and hide? We didn't hide. We stepped out and we showed the way. We led the way in SPEC War Group. The SEALs, the OUDT, we moved forward. We never went backwards. Because you've got to take it on at the front. You have to attack the enemy. Now, you don't have to attack them the right way. You can cheat a little bit, but you have to attack them. And you can't be afraid of them because we're all born to die. And you guys were born to live and we're all born to die, but we are, are born to move forward against the enemy. We move forward to take over land. We did things that no other organization's ever done during Vietnam. A group a size of us, we had 238 SEALs when I first started going to Vietnam. Now look at us now. Look what we've done. Spec war with the leadership of great men have moved forward to move us where we are today. But you guys were the leaders. You were guys when we started in 62, when you picked up the first set of weapons. You guys that, that, that constructed us to stand up there and take a beating. God, I love Dick Allen, but I sure didn't like him punching me in the damn gut hanging from a pull-up bar. But did that make me a better man? Some ways, yes. Some ways, no. But you know what I'm so proud of? I look at these kids right now. These young men are going through training and how smart they are. God, I was dumb in the dirt. I had to get a 10-point waiver. I waited around from class 42 to class 49, which I'm glad I went to class 49, but just to get a waiver. So I sat around and mopped floors for a while until I was able to get the training. I'll never forget the first time I went to training. My first guy was Hal Kirkendall. I felt so bad about Hal. He loved Texas. He loved Texas. Still got that damn twang accent, crazy as hell. He had to go back to Texas. Well, he left California. I ain't figured that one out yet, but but I used to took how I felt so bad because he loved Texas. So I'd get somebody to take me up that damn Imperial Beach and they had that big old cow farm up there off the Interstate Five, and I'd get out there and I'd take me a box and I'd pick up cow pies. And Hal would wake up in the morning, what the shit is this? I said, cow shit, Hal. <laughs> but who else? He he didn't kill me. He loved me. I paid for it for a little bit. But that's the camaraderie. We we're like brothers. Brothers fight. But brothers are always there next to you. We're friends. There's something you can never take away that. You're there. The reason I changed that statue, we're swim buddies. You're more important than I am. And I'm more important than you are. And that's the reason we fight the battles we fought today, time. Because it's the guy in front of you, the guy to the left of you, the guy behind you, the guy that's got your rear. We've always been there for each other. We never ran. We protected each other. And that's the reason we call that big statue down there, Swim Buddies. Because we're a team. And I tell you one thing, we've been in a lot of fights together, I can remember, and on our way to Vietnam, and we stood together. We didn't care what the damn odds more. I can remember going into, uh, uh, over there with Wayne into a, into a, a group, 
I can remember fights jumping out of trees with Mike and them. I can remember everything, but we stuck together. We didn't care what the odds were. And we sure as hell didn't care what the odds were in Vietnam. So you, I am so very proud of my comrades in arms. And there's one thing I never want to do, it's embarrass you. Because I tell you, this movie we're doing, I hope you're going to be proud of it. Because one thing, the reason I keep turning, turning these movies away, I want it to be understanding that you say, I was there and that's the way it was. We're great guys like Barry Enoch. God, I, but I would ever want to let him down. Rich Solano, the guys that improved their ways for us. The names we saw on the wall today. I want them and everybody to think about them. And with the help of Dick Couch, we're gonna get this book out great. And it's gonna be a great movie. And it's an honor of each and every one of you in this room. Because you stood for what I stood for and we stand together. And so it's my honor to be here amongst my warriors, my brothers, my comrades. And I'm looking forward to another day in time that we're gathered once again. So right now, what we need to do, if you've got to take a vacation, you need to come out and visit each other because soon we're all gonna be gone. And we wish we'd have taken that extra time to be there to hug you and let you know that we care for each other. It's okay to cry there, buddy. I cry all the damn time. I cry out on a lot of people's arms and shoulders in this room. So don't ever be ashamed of crying and showing your feelings because that's what it is, is feelings. Love is a crazy thing. And we have a lot of love in this room here tonight. God bless each and every one of you. God bless the greatest country in the world. God bless our seals above who watch over us. And God bless America always. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. And thank you to all the seals in this room.